I I think I just invented the world's greatest knot. It's a type of kamikaze knot, so you could lower your items down, and when there's slack, you could tug on that rope, and the whole thing magically unwinds so you could get your rope back. But the main issue with kamikaze knots, and probably why most people haven't heard of them, is they're far too unreliable to actually be useful. For example, there's four main, soon to be five, kamikaze knots. The bell ringer is very simple but a small jerk in the line will cause the whole thing to spill. The safety bell ringer holds a little bit better, but it can't hold a heavy weight, and sometimes it also jams up, so it defeats the whole purpose. The remote release hitch is basically a loop that hitches onto an overhand knot. It's even more secure than the past two, but if you do happen to hit it on something, the rope jerks, or you're lowering down a slope and it catches on something, the whole thing is just gonna let go. And the fourth one is the kamikaze knot itself. It's basically a sheep shank, and it's what Bear Grylls used when he did an episode of Man vs. Wild where he repels down a cliff, shakes the rope, and the whole thing comes loose so he can retrieve the rope and keep repelling. And while technically it is very secure, the downside is you're actually leaving a bit of rope behind every time you tie the knot. It leaves the anchor piece, and then it leaves the one that you're actually retrieving back to you. So you either need a knife to cut it, or you have two ropes to begin with. So at a job site, it doesn't really make sense if you're lowering tools down, for example, each time you're doing it, you're losing a bit of rope. So that's not practical. And then if you're in that very, very unique scenario where it's life and death and you're repelling down and you need your rope to repel down further, well then you're gonna be losing rope each time you perform this knot. Added to that, you also need a knife to be able to perform the knot. So although the kamikaze knots are a really cool concept, they all seem to have their flaws. So I set out to analyze what makes each of them work. And is there a way to make something that's more secure than the first three so that it could be reliably used at a job site, for example? All while being something that doesn't require you to cut your rope every single time you use it. Now before I show you the very first ever documented version of this hitch, I just need you to know that while it is more secure than those other hitches, it's still a kamikaze hitch. So it's not fundamentally secure. It's meant to shake loose. So please, please be cautious when using this. It could be very dangerous to use any kamikaze knot to recreationally repel or support your weight. So please don't do that. And now that we got the warning out of the way, I'm proud to present for the first time ever, the Bears Grip Hitch. It uses a combination of mechanics from all the other kamikaze knots and includes two fail safes. Meaning even if that top loop gets knocked off, there's still a really good chance that second fail safe is still gonna hold. So I first took the mechanics of a bell ringer, which is a half hitch with the loop threaded through. But the big downside of the bell ringer is if this loop happens to twist away from the standing end, then it opens up and completely unravels. So to fix it, I had to figure out how to keep it directionally this way, in line with the standing line, making it possible to open up. It's the same principle that makes the kamikaze knot so secure. The half hitches are opposite, so they can't twist loose. So then I combine that with the mechanics of the remote release hitch, which incorporates an overhand knot on a bite that acts as a hook for that loop to hang on to. I improved that overhand and instead made it a figure eight on a bite, giving it a bigger hook, and now we have two fail safes. We have the bell ringer, but then the loop goes over the figure eight on a bite, which locks it in this orientation so it can't spontaneously come loose. And that's the secret that allows the bear's grip to withstand jolts or different angles and not come loose. Until we're nice and ready and have a good amount of slack, you can release the first and then the second of the fail safes. Now here is exactly how to tie it step by step. We'll start a few feet from the bitter end of our line. Take a bite of rope and bend it 90 degrees towards your standing end. Loop around in front on top of itself, go around the back, and now we come around and thread it through the front again. You'll see a perfect eight has formed, and you could count two, four, six, eight, ten. If you've done it properly, you'll see an acute angle on one side and an obtuse angle on the other. Basically a small and large angle, with the small pointing towards your standing end, and the large towards the tag end. This is important because it creates a better hook. Now wrap the tag end around a tree or the loop of a bag, whatever you're using. 
we'll do a clockwise overhand twist on the standing line. Now pass a bite from the tag end down through the top and loop it over top of your figure eight. Now pull tight and make sure the half hitch binds and closes tightly on this loop. If you've done it properly, you could slip this loop off and see it holds just fine. The whole purpose of the figure eight is to keep it in the right direction. So the bigger we make this loop, the easier it'll be to make the release. And the smaller it is, the harder it will be to release, but the more secure the overall hitch will be. And now you've tied the bear's grip hitch. With slack, a shake of the rope should release the first, and another shake will release the second. Now sometimes it may require quite a bit of work to get it loose, but that's actually a massive advantage to this knot. It could get shaken, it could lie on angles, it could get jerked around, spun, it can hit on rocks while lowering things down, and it's not gonna come loose. And then only while shaking it in combination with slack is it gonna release the first safety, and then doing that again will release the second one. Then this, in my opinion, is the most reliable and practical kamikaze knot you could use. So you could lower toolboxes or buckets of scrap from a job site, saving you from traveling up and down a ladder a bunch of times. And I use it whenever I'm harvesting firewood on a steep section. Instead of just throwing that bundle of logs down, sometimes I have my canoe down there or I just don't want the logs to scatter, I'll lower it down with the bear's grip hitch and then get my rope back and lower another bundle. And if I'm hiking in the backcountry around really steep sections, I could lower my backpack down first, shake it loose, and then I have my rope to help me myself get down. Now this knot has been on my mind for the past 22 years, ever since seeing Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, where Sam and Frodo rappel down this cliff and are able to get their rope back. I've wanted to see this be a thing. So I'm really proud to have made a safer version of what's out there and publish it to the world to use. It is now and forever coined the Bear's Grip Hitch. So thank you guys for watching. I'm your friend DJ with the Bear Essentials, and thanks for stopping by.